Welcome to San Diego Market Movers, and I am sitting here today with Hennish. Welcome. Thanks, Bradley. How's things going? Appreciate you having me. I'm doing good. Yeah, very good. Happy to be yeah. here. Yeah. And so you kind of have a jack of all trades. You have your hand in a lot of different avenues in the market. So I'm curious to ask you, right? This is a different type of market than we were in six months ago. How are you advising sellers and setting expectations with this market versus six months ago? Yeah, uh, it's a good question, and it has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I've dealt with sellers throughout this year, uh, the expectations have to be changed as well, right? Earlier this year, you could price 5, 10, 20% higher than your neighbor's property and probably get it. Mm -hmm. You know, today you cannot. Um, and so you have to set the price in realist realistically, and it comes down to the realtor, the broker, to do their due diligence. So when I'm looking at a seller's listing, uh, I spend a little bit of extra time canvassing the area, seeing what other properties are doing, and not just that, I'll call every single broker that has a property for sale, pending, or just sold, mm -hmm. and say, how was the demand for that property? Right. Did you get a lot of showings? Did you get a lot of offers? And that should give me some indication of what I can expect from my property if it's going live this week. A little legwork up front before you list for so sure. that you make sure you hit the target for this property that for you're sure. about to list. Absolutely. And I think it's a, a good tactic to use because, one, you're working. Mm -hmm. Two, when you go meet your seller, you can say, hey, I talked to four other brokers that just sold houses in your neighborhood, and here's what they experienced on the demand last week. How is this setting hitting with sellers right now when you – come to them with this information that maybe they think we're still in the market we were six months ago? Um, you know, people have blinders to negative news, right? Okay. And so uh, you just have to be realistic about it. And so me personally, because I have investment properties that have hit the market and they're not flying off the shelf like they used to mm -hmm. a few months ago, I'm thinking of backup strategies for them, okay. right? Uh, other things that you can do as a seller is considering alternatives to encourage your buyers mm. to work with you for example, a seller carry. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. That's an option that you might consider and say, okay, cool. Well, I want to get X hundreds of thousands of dollars out of the sale, but maybe I could let the seller or the buyer have a two hundred thousand dollar loan that they're going to pay me interest on mm -hmm. until they're able to refi me out of it. I like that because you are, as a buyer and seller and as an investor, you're kind of going through the same psychological things that a seller wa was. Except, I guess you have a little more inside knowledge, but you have dealt with those same emotions and those same thoughts that now firsthand you can kind of convey to those sellers. Absolutely. No, you're right. And so because I do it myself, I think that's one of the selling points that I make when dealing with uh, a retail client is, hey, I'm not just telling you what to do. I do it myself. Right. And I've got properties on the market that I'm yeah. buying and or selling personally with my own money. Uh, and so I have to think of alternative solutions and strategies and do this extra legwork because I want to see my properties perform well right. and sell well the same way I would for my clients because right. I'm, I'm a fiduciary to you. Yeah, so you know how it feels. And right. It's easy to relate to sellers, right? For sure. And so, you know, I've got a property that's not selling. I love the location. I think it's a dream property. But I think buyers on the sidelines thinking something's going to happen. Right. Um, so my backup plan on that is to turn it into a rental. Okay. And it should cash flow nicely. Add some ADUs in a couple years, and now it's really cash flowing. Uh, and I'll have an investment that I'm happy about one to two years from now. But for right now, it's like you just have to ride it through. Yeah, I like that because you take your experience and knowledge from all different avenues that you have kind of a hand in in the market and are able to really successfully advise a client. Yeah, I mean, you know, because this is how real estate works. There's ups and downs, but at the end of the day, right. overall, it works in the long run. Yeah. Um, and so if you have a seller that's really motivated to sell, then you just have to set the expectations right. If you can have them, you know, be flexible and offer special terms to buyers, then right. there's an option there otherwise you know there's always the option of renting it and trying it again in a year i love that idea the the rental idea it gives a, another little perspective so appreciate that yeah absolutely i mean it's just the different strategies you have to think of all the options and sometimes i like to give people good ideas and bad ideas and yeah. that way we can filter down to just the good ideas oh yeah perfect <laughs> i love it well thank you for being here and thank you guys for watching thank you mm -hmm.